behind like that. Yeah, it always comes down to one mistake or or that lucky play Gilbert got, and I'm just like, man. <laughs> man. Hey, you know, hey, Gilbert will be losing the whole game. He do one good play, he throw it in your face. <laughs> That's right, beast mode. Who's the king? Daddy's here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. He's so, it's so crazy how quick he flipped that switch, bro. It's all right. I just got... I just got fucking Mortal Kombat, and I'm about to get better at that game. About to beat him and Taylor. I, I told I told Daniel, I was like, man, you ain't gonna be able to say nothing to Gilbert for the rest of the season. Anytime he says something, he's gonna be like, shut up, peasant. Yeah, yeah bro, it's <laughs> no mercy with Gilbert, bro. For real. <laughs> like, you ever think about like, I think about this a lot, but you ever think about like when you pass away, what people are gonna really say about you, like if they weren't lying. Oh yeah, <laughs> I already, like, already, like, already know what's gonna be on Gilbert's tombstone if I if I buy it. It's gonna be such your mouth and know you roll jabroni. That's going right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he's just yeah, he's gonna say the king has exited or something crazy. <laughs> he's I, Gilbert's the type of guy that's gonna have like a PowerPoint presentation after he's gone, like from the <laughs> casket. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shoot. shout out to Gilbert, though, bro. Oh, we are recording shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, but let's. <coughs> Damn. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Just like that, the Rona was back. Oh, man. <laughs> it, That's it's crazy because it went from scary to not so scary within the last three days. Oh, so, yeah. I, feel, I feel like every single one of them people out there is about to get Corona. That's gonna be nah, that's I, that's gonna be San Diego County spike from these people. I don't wish, I don't wish that I don't wish that on nobody. For no, I, no, I, I, I don't wish it on them, but I, I'm not gonna be surprised when they say, "Oh, we have a, a, a tremendous spike within the last week of Corona." I wonder why. I wonder why people. I mean, who who knows if that's real anyway? Now, I know, right? It's just so much is up up in the air right now, bro. My mind is totally confused. The the world's going crazy. There's fires left and right. They people looting targets. Come on, bro. It's a lot. Joey has on. had Joey has had the best target puns. Oh my god, he'd been having me weak all week. <laughs> yeah, no, well, Brett, don't make it sound like I'm just out here telling jokes on the issues. It was some real topics. No, no, yeah, it's some real talk, but the target puns was on point, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm all I'm all for getting back and doing this. And, and if you plan on looting or plan on destructing something, you know what I'm saying? Just pick the right target. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Stay out Another my singer. Oh, man. All right. Well, you know, it's going to be probably a pretty heavy show. So let's uh, let's just jump right into it. Uh, what's going on, Piglets? It's your boy, Taylor B. And I'm joined by my intrinsic co-hosts, Daniel, DJ, and Joey. Welcome to another installment of Culture by the Uncultured. And before we go any further, be sure to click that follow or subscribe button. And remember, Culture by the Uncultured is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Culture by the Uncultured. All right, gentlemen, I know things have been crazy, but, you know, just how, how y'all been? How y'all holding up out there? I think I'll quote Freak Nick, our, one of our old favorite movies, and just say, y'all niggas wildin', okay? Um, <laughs> Big facts. It's wild. <laughs> uh, I, I thought we were getting ready to turn a corner here. I was like, oh, okay, with the uh, country's opening up, you know, the state's opening up, or... We're going to head towards our future, this bright future we got going on. We can just go ahead and get past this corona thing. And nope, here we are right back in some more mess, man. Yeah. Before we get into like the nitty gritty of what's going on today, um, let's let's start. Let's go back about a week, week and a half. You know, let's let's start back there. Uh, first and foremost, I don't know if y'all watched the Charlamagne interview. I definitely didn't watch the whole thing, but it spread like wildfire. The fact that uh, Joe Biden apparently went on there and said, if you don't vote for him over Donald Trump, you're not black. And, <laughs> and within the recent days, it's coming to sound true. <laughs> I'm, look, I'm 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 a person who believes heavily in be true to yourself. And I think a lot of people who are in positions of power and politicians and stuff, it's hard for them to like joke around or be themselves because they're, they're on such like a strict, you know, like overwatch. And yeah, I think the sure. way Biden made that sound, it, it, it wasn't racist sounding. It was, it was inappropriate by, um, I'll, I'll say 
politic standards. But yeah. as for a sit down interview, me and you chopping it up, I I found a little more respect for Biden. Like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Say what you gonna say, player. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, hey, like he said, if you have to think about what he say, what he say, if you have to think about who you're voting for, something like that. It was, yeah. it was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. I actually kind of appreciated it, but the fact that he could just apologize and move on from it, we have to realize that anything that a politician or or somebody in a position of power from this, from pretty much from 2016 forward. Anything they say is nothing in comparison to what the orange man has been saying. That's a, that's a fact. I ain't going to deny that. I mean, if, if I had to go basically about a, a week and a half ago about the things that that Donald Trump has said versus the things that Joe Biden has said, Joe Biden hasn't nearly said anything that was as bad as what Donald Trump said, at least in my eyes. I'm sure a lot of people out there, they might agree 100% with what Donald Trump has said. And that's cool. You you know, you're entitled to your own opinion. But in my eyes, what, what Joe Biden said in the last week or week and a half compared to what Donald Trump has said, not nearly as bad, not whatsoever. And and not like we're just sitting here trying to compare them to say, oh, who's bad and who's not, because that's not how right and wrong works. Yeah. But let's keep it real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that what he said was kind of just like a shrug off the shoulder because the other person who's pretty much going to be running against him in this presidential election or this presidential race is the king of ignorant quotes. So sure. go ahead and talk your talk, Biden. I kind of feel like he almost said it because he's old too, and he was trying to be hip, you know. And it's like because it, it don't really like there, it wasn't it wasn't said with anger or nothing like that, you nope. know. It was kind of like he was like having fun with it, you know. It's it's, it's weird. It, almost it's, almost sounded like he had Bernie Sanders in the earpiece. <laughs> like, hey Joe, like hey Joe, Joe, say this, say this. <laughs> oh man, um, in other news, uh, about a week ago. <laughs> um, apparently Doja Cat uh, was out here wilding. Um, she's a bit, been out here in racist uh, incel chat rooms, uh, showing her butt, sticking her fingers in her mouth. Um, she claims it was a long time ago, but people have been posting and, and kind of putting the pieces together as far as like the, the images of her on live, on Instagram live and the images of her in the chat room and saying like, man, this was as early as, at least as Mother's Day. Um, and so it, it wasn't a long time ago. And then because of all this stuff too, an old song of hers resurfaced called didn't do nothing, which I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I recently found out is like a, is a, is a new racial racist term uh, that was made uh, having to do with the, the basically black people claiming they didn't do nothing when they, when it comes to like uh, police brutality and stuff like that, you know, um, it, it wild to say the least um i guess she's like jewish and south african which is interesting mm. i mean she's a little mm. bit weird you know that's um, it right there not not to say that <laughs> jews or south africans are weird we're just saying that and also that she herself is weird yeah yeah thank, thank, thank you joy thank you um and uh you know she's she's different for sure like she has wigs and like they don't ever look good um, <laughs> <laughs> talk you'll talk okay so she's, she's she's definitely different in in in, in that regard as far as like compared to like the other uh, black, you know, uh, hip hop artists and and R and B singers that we've seen, you know, uh, she definitely. Uh, it, I don't want. I'm not gonna say I'll leave her on. She's definitely just a different, you know. And and it's cool that she's been able to find this outlet for her to express herself and to, you know, make money and do whatever. I am. I'm never, you know, against all that. But if it comes to like racism or you know you saying the n word to like with a hard R to appease like white folks and all that stuff, I'm not rocking with that. It really, you know, it that. really shed light because. Uh, her being or her nationality and what she was what she claims she is or what she really is they tried to make that an excuse and a few days after um her actions were brought to social media and people were throwing her name and this and that there was a statement made via i think it was instagram or twitter or something and it sounded pretty much like her publicist because oh, this wow. person doesn't speak like this. And then she goes, um, I would never do this. This is old people trying to make me look some kind of way. Um, she said, oh, I'm from or, or half of my family's black. And that, that's when I hit the DJ scratch. And I was like, wait, <laughs> me, myself, I'm I'm Mexican-American. You know what I'm saying? I'm from San Diego. I grew up alongside a large portion of black community. Not one single black friend of mine is going to go out of their way to defend themselves by saying half of my family is black. 
Yeah. It doesn't true. mean shit. It means something to everybody personally. But when you're trying to explain your actions and this and that, that means nothing. That's what made me feel like the fight that everybody's kind of dealing with right now that we're going to get, you know, get to kind of like this race war and all this stuff that's going on. It's not necessarily black versus other right now. Black is the issue because black lives matter. And that's the, that's what, that's the, the, the message that's being pushed, not saying that others don't, it's saying this is the one that needs help right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But in it, her situation kind of shed light on this, on this situation in a way of, on the bigger scale, it's not just Black Lives Matter, but it's 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 people who are for everybody versus people who are not. So there's plenty of black people who l- would love equality amongst everybody, not saying, hey, we just want to be equal, but forget the white people. They're not saying that they fighting for equality in treatment and in systematic, you know, issues. And the people who are saying no, you just want this. No, you just want, how do they know? They never gave really quality a chance. So like Doja Cat's situation was pretty much setting us up for all this stuff that's going on and, and pretty much letting it be known that no matter what color you are, when there's issues amongst people, you're going to see that division happen. And I, I'm just, I'm a little upset because I've seen some of my black friends turn against not only people of my nationality, but other white people who haven't done anything wrong to them because of the situation. So that's where it's like there's no progression from that there. But at the same time, Doja Cat's fans completely, completely cut her ass off, bro. I have like three or four personal friends that are Doja Cat fans musically. And as soon as that came to light, they did a little bit of research just like that. Snap, cut her off that easy. And the problem is with society, we're not willing to do that. She lost like a hundred thousand followers, like immediately, like the next day. And I, and I hate, no, and that's true, but I hate to say it, but her finances and her career is still going to be fine because the people who support what she's saying is still going to fund her pockets. Yeah. Yeah. If, 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 if to, if, if he, who must not be named can still take it on the chin and still have a right. A family, not 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 a family, but it's still a following is what I meant to say. That right. those that can do no no wrong. It's the yes, example sure. that you're setting. People people think we have a problem just with Trump being in office because he is who he is. Not only is he kind of a bigot, not only is he ignorant, he doesn't write his own speeches, he doesn't he he answers questions with questions, he demeans people's, you know, personalities and characters. But it's like if this person is president and all these other people who kind of follow suit with his ideas and live out this racial, this racially charged and, you know, racist lifestyle, pretty much, let's keep it real. The people who look up to him are like, well, if he's racist and he's running the country, why should I be ashamed? And it allows all of this to continue. So I, I hope that we take the last, this last week and week and a half that, that, you know, that, all this been going on and it's crazy how it's all been racially charged it's it's been doja cat it's been um the the man before george floyd the um the woman who was shot in her home the, it's, it's Taylor. bro everything everything's just it's overwhelming now and as much as we hate the fact that people are res- uh, resorting to violence and stuff in the streets it's 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 long overdue and it and it's justified bro it so a, a lot of this stuff I want to say for the, the end when we finish this up real quick or not finish it up, but when we get to the, uh, when we get to George Floyd and that whole situation, just cause like, I, I got a lot to say, mm-hmm. uh, obviously, as we were talking about in pre-pro, but um, real quick, let's head into Christian Cooper real quick, a New York bird watcher who I believe was a Harvard graduate too. Um, he was accused by a white woman, Amy, uh, Amy Cooper. And I thought that was crazy. How that's a mad coincidence that they have the same last name um, of threatening her life in central park. Um, he recorded her basically uh, because she didn't have her dog on her leash and he was trying to give the dog treats to kind of like, you know, subdue it, I guess, or whatever. And, um, then she like proceeded to grab the dog up by the collar and was like choking the shit out of it. You could see it on the video. It was everywhere. Um, 
uh, like I said, she Christian asked her to put the dog on the leash. Uh, she wasn't going to do it. Uh, he started filming her, and then she told him that you know that she was going to call the police and that she was going to tell them that an African American man was threatening her life. And I mean, as soon as she gets on the phone, you, you could hear like the 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 like the fear in her voice and it's like it's a complete act because he's not doing anything like if you look at the guy he doesn't look like he's violent at all he's dressed like a like a square you know for lack of a better term like it, he don't he doesn't appear to be you know able to do any kind of harm to anything i mean the guy's a bird watcher for christ's sake like you, you <laughs> you're gonna have a you're gonna have a certain appearance for that alone you know and like i hate to say like don't judge a book you know they say don't judge a book by his cover but it's like come on dude like what are you gonna be dressed like and you see the pictures of what are you gonna be dressed like being a bird watcher first of all anyway well so, normally comfortable shoes aren't too fashionable so i would assume there's weird looking shoes and yeah yeah shorts <laughs> some some to that avail for sure you know glasses and whatnot um so but anyway yeah so you know he recorded her um she got really close to him you can see her choking the hell out of her dog it was super crazy um but you know one good thing came out of that and that's like you know people don't learn not to mess with black twitter and and, and i've seen a lot of it for the last couple of days too people like posting up somebody's name posting up a video of somebody let me get her name let me get her address let me get her job let me get blah 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 and it's been working for a lot of people and in this case it worked black twitter got on there they got her name she got fired from her job she uh PETA, or not PETA, but some kind of uh she got her dog from like an animal shelter they took the dog away from her um you know so and you know her life is pretty much ruined and and it's crazy because you know like until things kind of got a little bit more heated recently i felt a little bad for her so just a little bit you know like my my humanity when it comes to this kind of stuff is like i I know what she was trying to do weaponize the police and that's that's horrifying you know that that that's even possible in in today's society you know where it's 2020 the fact that you can even you know a white woman can do that to a black man still today i mean let, let's not let's not forget like one of the most horrific stories in history of emmett till about a white girl telling sell, telling people that a little black boy whistled at her um and that's and first of all that's why they killed him because they said this white girl whistled at her and then to come to find out she lied about the whole thing so that's that's just insane already right there here's but, put your life at risk ain't that a bitch it, yeah. it, exactly so, but, but today to even be able to, you know, get on the phone, put on a little scared voice and, you know, what, try to get the police out there so they can do some harm to somebody, you know? And it's just like, you knew what you were going to do. You knew what you were trying to do. You you knew because of the color of this man's skin that the police were not going to probably treat him the same way that they would treat you. Cause you're scared. You, you're a woman, you're white, you're, you're acting like you're scared. And it's like all those things are in your defense. And thank God he pulled out his phone to record it. Cause that could have probably been a whole different situation if he didn't have it on his phone. I can almost guarantee it would have been a whole different situation. So, you know, thank, thank God for that alone. Um, and, and like I said, I, I felt a little bit bad because I was like, dang, like, you know, like this is this is definitely just, it's her fault and she's done for it. And, you know, like, you know, she she got what she deserved, you know, deserved and all that stuff. But then like part of me was just like, dang, man, like she probably gonna be able to get a job for a minute. If she lived by herself, she probably gonna have she probably gonna lose her apartment, her house or whatever. She ain't got her dog no more. Like, you know, it's like the, the, the humanity in me was kind of showing and then things kind of got heated later on during the week. And I was like, fuck all that. <laughs> right, I ain't got no, and, and you know what? And I, I ain't got that. no time for no mercy. I ain't got no time for no sympathy for none of that bullshit. I'm, I, I'm through with all that. I hate to bring, that. I hate to bring this person back up because I know it's one of Brandon's least favorite people. But um, <laughs> last week or or a few weeks ago, we were the topic of discussion was um snitching. Yeah, yeah. and something that you just said right now kind of made me realize something. Um, you mentioned something about how black Twitter ain't having it no more and they're willing to go out and run and tell that and do this. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I kind of hope that I, we might have to have, I might have to do like a video on this apart from the podcast, but I'm a little upset with a certain group of people and it's not, it's not a racial group of people. It's just people with a mindset. Now we, we try to drag Takashi six nine through the mud for this snitching is what the word we use for telling what happened. But when it comes to real injustice, and I'm not saying what they were going through wasn't injustice. When it comes to real injustice, we always talk about shedding things to light. What's done in the dark comes to light. It's time that we expose these people and do this and do that. Mm-hmm. I feel like right now with what's going on, the black community is taking um 
shedding light on situations and speaking about stuff and showing things and showing video and realizing that that's not snitching and realizing that when you feel some kind of way, when you feel overtaken, you speak up on what's bothering you because ultimately all you have is your voice. If you, if you can speak, all you have is your voice. So the whole idea of snitching for personal gain and snitching or not, I don't like the word snitching, but speaking up for your injustice is a little different. And I think a lot of people are now realizing that when you're trying to bring attention to something, it's how you do it. And I think the way people are going about stuff right now isn't the way because it's a little, I don't know. I, I'm kind of lost for words right now. You know what I mean? Like there's so many lessons to have been learned in the last two weeks and it's all happening all at once. Like yeah, it's all, sure. and I feel like right now, um, the upper hand that a lot of black community um, has is their cameras, is their voice. They did this. They did that. What if, what if, and I hate to put people in a group, but what have white people been doing to minorities since we, since, since the existence of America? Yeah. Telling, <laughs> telling, call the cops, call this. They're doing this. They're doing that. How would, how would the police stations feel if every five minutes they got a call from a minority, a Mexican, a black, an Asian calling on white folks, just to, just to pad the numbers, just to pad the numbers to see what happened. Maybe that's the way I had a crazy idea earlier. I said, maybe we should tell all people of color to stop playing professional sports and stop acting in white made movies. I see. Maybe, that. maybe we should hit people where it hurts right in their pockets. You know what I'm saying? When is change really going to come? And is having protests and riots really going to do that. I don't know, but maybe, maybe the Twitter fingers and calling people out is a really good start. And we just kind of noticing that. Change is only going to come when you affect the dollar. That's all I'm going to say. You break that up, you, that's when all type of change will happen. You can see that no matter what's going on in this world, no matter if it be with the sports leagues, not wanting to come back because mm -hmm. of COVID and their money and all that stuff. It's once you hit them, like how you say, once you hit them in that pocket, that's the, that's the last, that's the one thing people who want, who want to change, who want to speak out, that's where they fail to act is, is in that point. Because as soon as you do that, that's when people know you're serious because it's yeah, they like, don't, they're, they're gonna be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel this way. You feel this way. Buy this product. Exactly. The people who run this country don't want everybody here. They just want their money. Yeah. So you give them little, little allowances like, oh, here, you guys can do this. They can't do this though, but you guys can do that. You can only do the things that are taxed on that could feed us. But when it comes to like policing and stuff like that, oh, nah, it's not, it don't work the same way. Yeah, and it's kind of sad that like that there's things that are like going to be more important. Like I've seen a lot of posts about people saying that um, the people that whenever it comes down to like affecting the money and dollars and shit, that people are so so worried about the fact that it's affecting their money, where it's more important than someone else's actual life or their li livelihood or their, mm -hmm. like a human being. It just it baffles me how in this like in this in this day and age we're still facing the same sort of things that we were facing years or years ago down the road something that we thought was like unfortunately this injustice used to be the norm back in the day and we thought that we were moving in a better direction and something that's gonna sort of eradicate it and it seems like it's still here to this day it might not be in the same sort of vein or it might not be in the same sort of light because it isn't uh it isn't put in the same idea as slavery but it's we're still it's it feels like we've taken a couple steps forward and we're going back we're going back to the far, yep. where, part where we're still putting these people in these situations where we're giving these in, these injustices. But at least it's like people are saying, well, at least it's not slavery. Yep. And you know what? In this country, I think there's two things that need to happen. One, we need to stop taking off. We need to start. We, we need to stop including um, skin color slash race and birth certificates from America. What's the fucking difference? What's the difference? If you're born here, what are you? American. Let's get that out the way, first of all. And if and the second thing is we need to rewrite the Constitution. I don't know any other lands that's moving forward with society and has all types of new technology and military and this and that and lifestyles. And we're holding on to something that's 250 years old. How's that make sense, bro? If we're let alone the fact that it wasn't it wasn't even made with us in mind whatsoever. Right. Exactly. It was made for 
400 people who came over on a ship. Come on, bro. Like it's, 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 it's so, it is so stupid. The stuff that we have to argue about because people before us weren't bright enough to just say, maybe this what needs to happen. And at the same time, you understand that a lot of people up top aren't as high as they thought they were because their hands are tied when it comes to some real change. You know what I mean? So I'm all, I'm a part of me is really against all the riots and all that stuff, but another part of me hopes they hit, they hit it home. They, they connect with the right person. They, uh, burn the right building. Shit. Take burn. T- t- let's take the constitution and burn that motherfucker. First of all, cause that's just all out of whack right now. Well, the one thing I, I definitely don't condone them messing anything up, especially in the community, because for one, all they're going to do is charge us to fix all that stuff. Hey, there's no private company that's going to come in and, and bail all these people out. Everything that they're breaking, they're going to raise our tax prices. They're going to charge us to fix all this stuff up. So why are you even breaking any of this stuff? Especially, especially, especially in San Diego. I, I, I can't remember the last time somebody died here in San Diego from from police brutality or anything like that. And they're, and they want to, they want to talk about speaking up for, for this Floyd guy in Minneapolis. These same people that, that, that are saying, Oh, we're, we're speaking up for him are the same people that are walking by uh, poor black people on the street each and every day and not even giving them a handout or anything like that. So I like, I, I really, I, I, I can't stand the fact that it always has to come to this. Every time there's some type of a protest that it, it always has to come down to breaking some stuff, these innocent, these innocent shots, bro. Like I couldn't, I could like the people that were going across the bridge and they were going ac- across the freeway, they were hitting other people's cars. Like the people that have nothing to do with the police getting their products damaged and getting their buildings blown in. It's, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. I don't understand that. They need to stop doing that. Uh, um, just to answer your question, the last one I remember in San Diego was in El Cajon where an unarmed black man was shot by the police, Alfred Alango. And uh, I believe that officer was uh, um, no charges against that officer. And I, I remember that being a big issue. They shut down the eight freeway down there in El Cajon. So, um, there is there is a lot of instances um, around San Diego, but it's also I mean, if you're if you're talking about San Diego specifically, you got to remember San Diego isn't an original city in the United States. This is a military city with a few homegrown families, but a lot of people from San Diego, their extended families are not from San Diego. Yeah. So like all, so the oppression that they feel from places like chicago new york uh, a lot of places in the south texas this and that a lot of those people's bloodlines didn't start in san diego they started elsewhere so there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, issues here and also let's not forget that in san diego we do have some neighborhoods and areas that are and you know they're predominantly white but they're also they they're not they, they don't shy away from racist comments or statements. We do have Santee where people often get into it, even at the Walmart wearing KKK hoods and all that. And I understand you're free to wear what you want, but you got to understand those people do exist. There's people out there who genuinely believe that their race is superior. And those things bring up emotions when you have the amount of killings in the street happen by, you know, happen due to the hands of officials that happen to not be of color often so like everything that's going on it's it's just a whole it's a whole mess it's a whole mess right now there there is no solution in sight right now i just hope people don't get hurt because i'm pretty sure we're pretty close to real bullets flying because you heard that i mean i does anybody here really respect the president where all all he do is tweet no facts because I, I just heard of I just heard of a story up in Oakland where um, some peace officers that got got shot at one of at one of the rallies up there. So I, I believe Brandon called that out where he was talking about some good cops are going to end up getting hurt. Unfortunately, if this continues to to disseminate into what is going into, and mm-hmm. I just heard about that this morning where they were getting hurt. But I don't know, DJ, did, is anything happening where you're at in the country? So, um, yeah, there is a bunch of stuff that's going on in Seattle. Uh, they're doing the same thing, just like how they're doing uh, riots and rallies everywhere in, in support of George Floyd. There is stuff going on in Seattle. Obviously, that's on the other side of the uh, of the water for me, because obviously there's a there's a big stretch of a big stretch of water that c- 
cuts basically Washington in half, and uh, I'm happen to be on the other side. So on this other side in Silverdale, there's really not much going on. Um, there's really not a lot of things going here, but in Seattle, they are doing the same things that you see out in, uh, like in La Mesa or in uh, or in New York or in uh, Minnesota. There's things like that that's going on. Um, I, me being in the military, it is kind of hard for me to be able to step on those sort of things and to say anything on those per chance because of the fact that I have to be in this, I have to be uh, held to a area where I can't really do anything about it. I'm kind of in this situation where I can't even, like, I'm not even, it wasn't until yesterday where we weren't allowed to even go to Seattle, period. So it's like, I, I, I've, I've seen, all, I've seen a lot of it actually, and I have been, had these conversations and she's, she's on the news every day. So she's been reading about places in Jacksonville and Minnesota and La Mesa and all these places where all this stuff is going on. So I really haven't had an opportunity to see it, but I do, I do hear about it a lot. I'm going to just say this real quick. It doesn't matter where these things happen because location, location is just a, a subtopic we talking about the oppression of people yeah and those people exist in all these places so i i, I don't care that they're i don't care about the location people are saying oh it's happening in uh minneapolis that's not here it's not there yeah but the people that's mad is cut from the same cloth yeah you know so i'm okay with that i just like again we just have to be wiser with you know what you're doing uh, real quick i just want to kind of take it back a little bit to the specifically the george floyd uh murder um you know obviously a handful of cops uh apparently subdued george floyd because of i don't even know what the hell the fucking true story is right now uh, i'm hearing a bounce check i'm hearing a fake 20 dollar bill or a fake 10 dollar bill i don't know what the story is either way they apprehended george floyd um more footage is coming out than we've seen orig- initially initially obviously we saw that there was a cop putting his freaking knee in george floyd's neck which is i don't know who the fuck is teaching you that wherever whatever training is going on with that that's not right uh secondly uh, another video came out where it shows they had george floyd in the car so i don't know what the fuck was going on why he was out of the car all of a sudden because there's cops on both sides of the car and and he's in there and it looks like they're like tussling or messing with him or something people are sitting there beating the shit out of him i don't know what's going on you can't really see but it don't look good that's all i'm gonna say i don't know what happened from that moment to him ending up on the floor or why none of this footage all like matches up together um and it, it really just kind of sucks but a lot of people were there. They were trying to tell him, you know, get off his neck. You know, he can't breathe or whatever. Uh, one of the officers was kind of standing by, standing guard, I guess, and kind of preventing any civilians from kind of interfering. Um, people were have been saying, like, oh, like, don't don't record me. You know, watch me die. Like, so, you know, one of them kept getting closer, and he kept the, – one of the officers kept pushing him away, let alone the fact that there's three other guys on George Floyd's body. I mean, it, it's one of those things where it's kind of like – Unless you're really risky, unless you're truly willing to risk life, limb, or eyesight to save another human being like that, the only, the only, the only option would have been to literally rush, rush the cop that was that had one on his neck, and, and push the other cop out of the way, and straight up tackle the one cop, guaranteeing that you were going to go to jail. You're going to get shot. Yeah, you're going to get, get shot. shot. You're either going to get shot or you're going to go to jail. Guaranteed. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The hurtful part is when you go to so when if you're on social media or when you reading or just watching videos, I try to stay away from comments now because it's so much hurtful stuff out there. There's so much dis, just 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 negative stuff that people are looking to say. It doesn't matter what he. Clearly, if this man is not a murderer. If he did something petty and the police show up, even if he had a tussle, at what point does an officer say, okay, we have control. He's face down on the floor with cuffs on. Why do you have to to kneel on the man's neck for eight plus minutes? Yeah. Yeah, It doesn't matter what he did. The the crazy thing is just that in my experience, and I've explained to a couple people that, you know, I was only an MP, but for so many years, right? And every time I was trained to handcuff somebody, like we, you know, you kind of get it dumped into you and it it came to the point where like, you know, I'm trying to help teach other people, you know, how to like handcuff procedures and all that stuff. And you realize that this stuff works. 
like doing it over and over again, it works. You get that muscle memory going. You remember what to say, how to say it, you know, so that it doesn't sound wrong. Like they they go, they break it down into like, don't say it this way because it can come off sexual and you can get fucked up for that. You know, like yeah. they break all this shit down, and that's MPs. That's not even real cops. We are basically like glorified babysitters. So why are if if cops are not getting trained this way, I don't know. They need to be getting trained this way. But like like I remember like having people on the ground, like you know, like training partners. We'll have we got a guy on the ground or whatever, right? And then somebody somebody puts their taps the motherfucker on the back and then the fucking the whoever's training whatever ncl is in charge grabs the troop and be like what the fuck is wrong with you why are you putting your knee in his back in his back that's not even the neck a place that for sure you will you can get choked and die that's that's insane yeah, that you yeah. even thought to put your neck and your knee in somebody's neck that's insane i like that you don't give up you don't give a fuck about that man you didn't give a fuck about him it really hits home with me because um well, just uh, it's a quick, quick story time to tie this in together because I have asthma, right? I've had asthma my entire life, and my mom wouldn't let me play sports, wouldn't let me play football um, growing up. Um, and I didn't realize it until one day when I was went to go out and play football with some with some of the older friends, and they all tackled me. There's like at least five, six people on top of me. I could not breathe. It was the most scariest moment of my life having all those people on top of me, and then I can't breathe, and they weren't even on my neck, bro. And then so – just seeing the first video of him having his knee on his neck made me feel a certain type of way. Cause anytime I can hear somebody say, I can't breathe. I can sympathize with that so much. Like I wake up in the middle of the night sometimes and I can't breathe. And it's scary as hell for me um, to, to know someone's applying force to my neck to where I can't breathe just off that first angle really, really made me feel away. And then there's a second angle that came out like the next day or something like that, where you see all four of the cops on him already. Like that man is incapacitated at that point. He's not going anywhere. And then you're still on his neck like that. Like I, I can, I can totally understand people's anger at that. I can totally understand that. But at the same time, I can't because that's never happened to me or to somebody I know. So that's where it's that gray area for me. It's like, as far as how angry I can be or how much I can sympathize with people. Mm-hmm. But it's, but hearing that him and Eric Garner saying I can't breathe, I could totally sympathize with that. It's the yeah. energy behind it. It's not so much that like we, we got to understand there are and, and I, I don't want to make this the driving topic, even though it kind of is. There are racist people amongst us in our oh, lives yeah. and they're not going away. Even though the numbers drop, they're not going away. A lot of these people don't display acts of racism because they know the society is changing with the youth, whether they like it or not. There's there's going to be a lot more people who's going to clap back. There's a lot more cameras. There's a lot more this and that. So they're 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 walking slowly through this. If you if you know what I'm saying, they're being careful about their racism. That's why they do it in groups and how they do it. But I feel like a lot of people will make excuses and find the right moments to do those things that they've you know premeditated in their mind, and that's the problem. It, it looks like, yeah, there's justification for you pulling him over. There's justification for you handcuffing him. There's justification for this, that, and a third. But taking his life when he's already, you know, under control, that's different. And we've just seen that happen too much. I, I It's something simple. I feel like maybe we just need to create real standards for police officers and treat them like an occupation we need to stop and i'm not no offense to any police officers anybody any mps brandon anybody who's done any kind of police work or security or anything oh, they don't we, give need, a fuck. we need to treat every position of policing just exactly what it is it is an occupation just like every other job you get uh every couple of months you get um interviews about your work you do this you do that i feel like too much is being pushed under the rug and careers have been elongated to where people get comfortable and a lot of stuff has been hidden so it's just time to put some real limitations on who's policing the streets that way it doesn't matter what color anybody is if a white man does something to a white man boom jail time or death black man does something to a black man boom jail time or death i hate to say it but maybe we're at the point where fear is the only thing that's going to correct this Uh, the thing that kind of sucks is that like you always hear like whenever there's something that goes on in the military like coming from a military aspect i mean i was i know that brandon was talking about it and stuff I had the same type of training because I am in a security forces type of thing. But it's kind of like 
they always say that as the military, you get held to a higher standard. You get you're expected to be able to carry yourself and to handle these situations in a different way, in a different manner, to be able to know how to de-escalate from these things. There was no de-escalation in his force. Not at all. There was nothing that like he thought that, okay, this guy is like, you're talking about nine minutes of sitting on someone's neck. That's, that is, there's a point in this, in this sort of situation where, yeah, I understand that your adrenaline's pumping. I understand that there's people watching you, that there's things going on, but just like how military is held to a higher standard, so should the police. They should be held to this higher standard of they should have this this type of training, this type of knowledge ran through them that they should be able to know when, okay, what I'm doing is is that. And it's unfortunate that it's getting to these points where you have all these people that are losing their lives and there's people that are going through these injustices and nothing's going not, – they're not getting any justice for it. The families of these people aren't getting any justice. In the military, if I'm if I for whatever reason have to even pull my hand, I'm gonna go through an investigation. I'm gonna go through I'm gonna be guilty until I'm proven innocent. It's gonna be these sort of things where I'm gonna go through all these things, all these checks and balances to know that I I knew that I was doing the right thing. I have to my at that point. Why is it now that we have these cops that are doing all these things wrongfully and they're not getting nothing they're getting a slap on the wrist, administrative leave. They're fucking nothing's going on with it. It's it's a slap in the face, to be honest. Absolutely, and 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 the you know the people are are tired of it. Um, just to once again, kind of backtrack a little bit, kind of keep us on like on a timeline uh, of sorts. Um, so obviously, from the George Floyd incident, there was a a huge public outcry. And first first and foremost, it started in Minneapolis. There was a a protest that went on, and then which turned into a riot. Um. Pretty much, you know, people started destroying a lot of things. I guess a target was maybe the, the first target, you know, uh, no pun intended. And, you know, it was hit hard, you know, pretty much ransacked, destroyed. People kind of broke into everything, turned it to rioting and looting. People were taking all kinds of stuff. Um, There's a lot of jokes made, you know, it's cool. You know, people want to find, you know, humor and like the, 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 the dark things that are going on in the world. That's totally okay. Um, what What really kind of sucks, though, is that like, you know, because of our our country and because of like, you know, even like movies, like, you know, based on true events or, you know, you kind of go back and you learn about something that maybe they didn't teach you in high school, for example, like that the government was found guilty of fucking assassinating MLK, you know, uh, things like that, you know, pretty much white people kind of inciting things or, or even war tactics like, you know, uh, kind of in, in uh, basically kind of putting on like sleeper cells, basically, you know, like putting people into little groups just to kind of infiltrate it and then make that group look bad. You know, it, it happens all the time, you know, uh, black Panthers, uh, the list goes on, you know, there's, there's, there's all kinds of nefarious dealings going on. And, you know, there's a ton of video going on right now saying that, you know, there was like some cop, like just destroying windows and stuff. Uh, there's a video of a black dude trying to like, Hey, what the fuck are you doing, dude? It was some random business. He just started busting out the windows. Right. And then he comes up to him and he's like, you get near me. I'm going to punch you or whatever. And he's like, are oh, you want to go? He's like, yo, hold my blunt. Who's going to hold my blunt real quick. You know, and the guy tries to walk off or whatever. He's got fully covered, bro. Like from head to toe, you can't really see nothing on him. He got glasses on. He got covered in his mouth. He got an umbrella and all that stuff. People are like making all kinds of accusations. Like, oh, the umbrellas, how like, you know, police officers identify each other. I seen one where it said like, I guess in LA or whatever, they're like dressing like normal people, but they're using like an orange band to identify each other and stuff like that. I don't know what's going on in what's real or whatever, right? There's a whole lot of conspiracy. Um, following the, the Minneapolis riot, um, obviously a bunch of videos spread, like I just talked about, and it obviously more protests followed suit afterwards. Uh, San Diego obviously had the one in the Mesa. There was one in LA. They pretty much shut on a freeway like the first day. And I think there was another one yesterday. Um, right now there's one in Long Beach going on. Uh, there was one in Florida. There was a big one in Florida. They started spraying pretty much and pretty much everywhere. They got hit with tear gas, pepper spray, uh, rubber bullets and all that stuff. I know they were doing, I think in, uh, in, in North, what, what not North Virginia, uh, North Carolina, uh, J. Cole was out there. I know YB and Corday went out to uh, he went out to Minneapolis. 
You know, they're, 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 people are everywhere right now trying to show support. There's a lot of celebrities that are stepping up, calling other people out, showing support. I know King Bash made a video where he was talking about his people telling him, nah, you should take that video down, bro. You're going to lose brand deals. He's pretty much telling, I don't give a damn. If I'm going to lose a brand deal over this, I don't need to be with that brand. You know, and I was like, it's, it's cool to see these people stepping up and like, you know, being real about it. You know, like they, I, and like I said earlier today, there is a line being drawn, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately. And I, you're going to have to pick a side. A lot of people talking about staying neutral. And fuck all that, fuck all that shit. I, I'm the most neutral motherfucker you can find. I hate confrontation. I hate arguments. I don't like all that shit. But this is not a time to be neutral. It is absolutely not a time to be neutral. It's a time to pick a side. And and you're letting your you're letting your position be known, whether you're being vocal about it or not. You're letting your position be known. I just wanted to, I just wanted to piggyback off of something you said, and I kind of had a realization in my mind when you said it um the police are shooting tear gas and rubber bullets um i know what we're i know what people are outraged about right now is a is a multitude of things and i know that george floyd wasn't involved uh with a weapon in this other than a knee in this case why why haven't we moved on from police using rubber bullets as the primary source of weaponry why hasn't pepper spray been used more often than than bullets? I I just think that might be one change coming soon. I don't know. Because obviously there's people taking rubber bullets right between the fucking eyes, getting two black eyes, broken cheekbones, and blah, blah, blah. As if that's not punishment enough, we don't need to light people up in the streets with with metal bullets. Yeah. There's a... Um... So, so a lot of it is just, it, it pretty much just depends on where you're working at basically. And that's like the, that's what I feel like is it's weird because it's kind of like a, I don't really know what side to take on this particular subject, but I always talk about how every precinct gets trained differently. You know what I mean? Every, every area has their own standard, has their own order of operations. There's all kinds of academies all over America. There's not just one single place that everybody gets trained from, or there's not one place that disperses all the information to every, you know, precinct or whatever to be like, all right, this is the standard we're going to uphold across the nation or whatever. Right. So, so when it comes to that, uh, it's really hard because you, first and foremost, you don't want, one entity because then obviously that makes it more like a government authority or something like that you know it's kind of it's weird in that in that regard but at the same time you do want a somewhat of a standard because you know one place might have this escalation of force you know and another place might have a de-escalation of force or something you know what i mean uh one place might jump up to this level of force right away and another pl- pl- place might jump up to an even higher level of force right away for like for the same for same or similar crimes or whatever or you know or whatever they're faced with it, it, because there's not one standard you know it's 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 different all across no. the board they're probably the only real stem that there is is probably four mps because they are the army it's one entity so Pretty much wherever you go, you're probably gonna have that one standard. The one, the biggest difference is probably gonna be what you have as far as gear, but you're probably gonna have the same standard that you had in another duty station versus like a police versus pol- individual police stations around the country. Um, so but, pretty but, much having the idea of states united flopped. Why yeah. are you gonna have one piece of land with sub with 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 major rules and then say we're gonna piece this up into 50 different pieces with minor rules to where when it comes down to situations like this, why is this happening here? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Well, duh, it's been years and years. It's time to create guidelines through the nation to, to, to really secure minds. You know what I'm saying? They're not trying to help. They're not trying to help anybody. And, and honestly, I'm, I'm that's giving, what hurts, I'm the, most. That's I'm, that's what hurts the most. They're, you're not trying to help anybody. You're not even trying to help. The, the, the part that really hurts is, and I know I hate using this, but it, it, it is what it is for our country. Our country is ran by white people. Okay. It always has been. And the only reason why they let minorities have their quote unquote freedom was to do these jobs to where they can still make money off of it. And they don't even want to help broke white people. And the broke white people are so stupid that they believe all the racist things that they're telling them and make them hate everybody else. And it's just a it's just a big ass cycle, bro. I, I'm disgusted with it. And I hate that we have to talk about it. And it's been a topic since I was born. And it's been a topic since my grandparents were born. I had a, I had a conversation with a friend of mine uh, recently and 
uh, we were just kind of talking about, you know, like I, I just, you know, wanted to talk to somebody about kind of like the things that were happening, you know, with George Floyd and everything else. And she had like a very, you know, brilliant thought as far as um, she said she took a couple of classes and that, you know, uh, a, an idea she had was that like it, it really kind of in order for change to really occur. And, you know, I mean, obviously we ain't going to see it in our lifetime. Probably we might not even see it like in our grandkids lifetime. But she was saying that it, it starts at like the base level. You know, it starts at that's that's where you got to go. You need to you need to hit the kids. You need to hit the children just because. Um, kind of like he said, there's like these racist groups or whatever, right? And they behind closed doors and everything. You gotta, you gotta get specific, you know, you gotta get in there, get the knowledge out there, let people know what's up because right now, you know, right now down the street, you know, John and Sue, they're, they're telling their kid that he's better than, 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 you know, little Bobby down the street because the color of his skin, you know what I mean? There's, there's, it, it's just happening, you know what I mean, and 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 it couldn't, it could potentially not even be like like really overt racism, like all oh, like you know them saying the n word or him, them them specifically saying he's dark, but the way they they're treated, they're the way that they're treating other people, you know, their their kids are seeing that oh you're not treating this Hispanic man or this dark this black man the same that you're treating this white man, so that means that the white people are better than I'm assuming right, or that I can trust the white people more than I can trust the darker people, you right. know, things like that, and it's like it. it it really comes down to teaching the next generation and like giving instilling that knowledge in them. If we don't do that, then, you know, us protesting, us rioting on stuff, that's not going to stop it. it. It's ultimately it's not, it, it could get some change like laws and like maybe in the, to some of the systems maybe, but to stop racism, exactly. it's going to be, gener- it's going to be generations. And that's why, that's have to why get the, to the only youth. thing that's going to help us is a system, but nobody's creating real systems. These people, are, these people that you're expecting to make, a system won't even vote. Exactly. That's and th- and that's why I posted on my Facebook. I said to all the people that I know personally, if you're out there doing anything more than than an honest, peaceful protest, if you're out there looting, if you're out there setting things on fire, if you're out there doing this, make sure your ass is in the booth voting too. Then, because if you're really trying to do something for some change and you're outraged, change it in your community first. We might not have a say as to who's president and we might not have ever had a say as in who's president yeah. but what we can change is our mayors you know what i'm saying we can change other things so if everybody's that pissed off to where you out there disrupting um communities and and destructing things setting things ablaze make sure you bring that same energy when it comes when it comes time to be thoughtful and use your your resources as a citizen you know what i'm saying so i hope people really follow through because i'm I'm gonna be on people's helmets the people who's really showing out right now and doing the most in a few months when it comes time to do that I, i'm gonna i'm gonna put it i'm gonna put pressure on people because i feel like if i don't other people won't and that's the direction we need to go in also i like what you said brandon about her saying it starts at the base I agree. That's why racism will never leave because there's people teaching inside the home. My Mm -hmm. issue is how come minorities and uh, not all of us, obviously there's always been this kind of, (sighs) if we fight for equality, think about those definitions. Minorities are fighting for equality of treatment, not just equality of understanding. We're all human. We're all equal in that. Right. We're talking about treatment. We're trying to get people to change their mindset. How how easy has that been for any of you guys to do to change somebody's mindset? It's like damn near impossible most of the All right. time. So it's hard enough to change have, my own mindset half the time. Right. So what you have exactly? We're we come from a place where we always have to adjust outward to coexist. Now, what would have happened if years ago? I would say I would go back to the fifties when or. Around what time was it? Maybe World War Two, when we were going through um, discrimination and we were trying to get like um, black students to go get into white schools and stuff like that. Yeah, the uh, early sixties. You kind of you okay? So you see how even that story, the way I told it very quickly, made it sound like black people wanted to be educated with white people like they were equal, not too many colleges we have now are the what are they called the black colleges the um historically H- black H- colleges HBCUs, HBCUs? Yeah. yes right that's what we need to do with our kids 
forget the public school system. We need to start doing homeschooling, homeschooling. Stop, stop teaching the ideas of this is history. This happened, this happened because all kids know, all kids know when they grow up is uh, the constitution. These are the States. These are the presidents, blah, blah, blah. We need to start teaching our people the same things that, that white people who are racist are teaching their kids growing up. We need to teach our generation of kids the same thing outside of public school outside of it we don't do that we we, in the system that we live in doesn't allow us to be to to have financial freedoms so guess what that's we go we go to work and our kids go to public schools and they come back and we don't know what they learn yeah my pastor said that earlier in the week he said we keep sending our kids to caesar and be and surprised and they come back romans so I, I, he took all his kids. All his kids are being either, or being homeschooled, or they're, or they're in this certain type of learning. It's not a learning center, but it's like a separate school. He's like they're they're no longer going to go to public school. They're not going to go to they're not going to go to a normal college. They're going to be sent to like a special like. Um, or they're, they're pretty much going to screen every one of their colleges if they if they go. It's definitely important. It's definitely important where you get your knowledge from, just because you know you you get a certain amount in school. You can get some things like. I, I, I guess got lucky hearing some of the stories that I've heard. I don't know if it's because the teachers just thought it was important. And I, and I had a lot of white teachers in my life, but some teachers thought, you know, that it was important to uh, tell us some of this. Like Emmett Till, I learned about that in school. Not a lot of people learned about that in school. I, I know a lot of people that I talked about that with, you know, including black people that didn't hear about that until later in life. I was just fortunate enough to hear about that in school. Um, but you, but there's so much more than Emmett Till or, or Martin Luther King or Malcolm X and all these guys, you know, there's so much more in our history that has happened. Um, you know, same thing in Hispanic history, same thing with, you know, in, in, in Asian history, it's just, there's a lot more than, you know, what we have been told in, in our quote unquote American history, a lot of atrocities and, and wrongdoings that, you know, our, our government has done to us that are just kind of sucked under the rug. I seen today, we were talking about, um, I have this like nerd group that I'm part of. They're talking about like lynching or whatever, right? That like, you know, when it comes to slavery, or whatever, that's like the most comfortable thing that like, you know, white America is with like kind of admitting to or like owning up to like, yeah, you know, black people's getting lynched or they talk about lynchings of, you know, black people or whatever. But there was so much more fucked up shit that was happening during what? the slavery era, way worse than getting lynched. And it's just like, but nobody talks about that stuff because it's like, you want to like sweep shit under the rug and you don't want to know the whole truth. You don't want everybody to know what's going on because America's history is on some fuck shit. Let's be, let's be real about it. It's on some fuck shit. Why haven't the people who don't want to live with those of color, why, why are they so convinced that America is the place for them? If I was so pissed off with my surroundings and I don't want to live here, why wouldn't I just up and leave? Why, why? If I was white, why wouldn't I go to Europe? Why wouldn't I go to Australia? Why wouldn't I go elsewhere? Because we're everywhere. But realistically, there ain't, yeah, the, realistically, there ain't nowhere for, for a group of racist people to go. There ain't nowhere for them to go. Whether it's white people or whoever it is, a group of racist people, there's nowhere for them to go. You can you can go to you can go to Ireland. People are not going to fuck with you being racist out in Ireland. Right. You can go to Australia. People are not going to fuck with you being racist in Australia. You can go to Europe. People are not going to fuck with you being racist in Europe. I mean, some people, it's always going to be like your groups. You're going to be you're going to be limited to the same things that you're limited to out here. You're going to have to have, have your little group, have your little area that you that you're safe and comfortable at. You ain't just going to be able to go wherever the hell you want freely. Not that black people can do it either, clearly. But but it's I feel like. When it comes to those like those groups, those those specific groups, you only got a couple like safe havens and where like the rest of us who are just trying to live and just be free. That's all we trying to do is live and be free, chilling. Right. And we you can know go everywhere crazy? else. Riots and stuff are happening now, but how often do we have riots and looting? How like honestly? Not At the often. end of every championship event. Not okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and 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 no no real no real talk. And and who and predominantly what race is those people? White folks, and what do they say on the news? Yeah, they, oh, they are here having a good, passionate fans that went a little too hard, you know, blah, dancing, blah, blah, celebrating, a couple doing things, a couple that. stupid moves. Oh, but there's justification for that. Yeah, Miss me with the bullshit, yeah. bro. Sorry, sorry, it's Miss me. Um, to to go back real quick to the timeline because we're running out of time right here. Um, so I had I already mentioned that you know we uh, a lot of protests sparked everywhere else. Um, pretty much right after the Minneapolis riot thing ha- occurred, um, President mm-hmm. Donald Trump went onto Twitter and said something along the lines of it was unacceptable. Um, basically saying that you know once the looting shot starts, the shooting starts. Well, that was the wildest thing I've ever seen from an American president in my entire life. I know social media. 
in the grand scheme of things is relatively new, but I have never heard a president talk like that in my lifetime, first and foremost. Um, secondly, uh, the National Guard was sent out, and, and, and let's be real honest, folks, you don't have to really be that scared of the National Guard. Um, it's just kind of like a show of force for the most part. They're not, they're, they're weekend warriors. They're not training every day like real people in the military. They are, they have the equipment and stuff like that, and they have the capabilities for sure, but most of them are not like super trained. Most of them are out of shape. Most of them probably haven't even zeroed with their weapons, so you don't got to be worrying about even getting hit by them. They might shoot you away and miss you by a wide, wide left, you know, yeah. out here looking like Nate Kading or something, but, you know, so don't worry about it too much. <laughs> So but at the same time, but, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was say you be saying that, but at the same time, by saying that these people aren't having, they're weekend warriors. They have no, not as much training. They also aren't as like, they aren't as used to seeing this sort of stuff. And if they come into it, it does pose a possibility that they use that they do anything bad. Like they could, they could be worse than the police because they have less training than those. Right, people. the adrenaline might take them places they weren't ready for. Oh yeah. But uh, but a lot of times too when you when you when you think about like security force or personnel and stuff, a lot of like even just like in in the Middle East, a lot of killing comes down to did you get the order to do so? If you ain't got the order to do it, you can't do it regardless. You know what I mean? So I mean a lot of the pictures I've seen these guys don't even have magazines in their M16s. And second of all, M16s, what, what's going on here? But so that's why I say it's a show of force more than anything. They don't have anything mounted on the Humvees. People are talking about tanks. I ain't seen no tanks, but I've seen Humvees. I haven't seen nothing mounted on them. I've seen guys out here with no freaking magazine in their M16s. Like I said, it's a show of force. They're basically just trying to say like, you know, National Guard is here. Uh, it, it could get to that level if y'all want to take it to that level, of course. That's basically what the big man is trying to tell us. Um, um, but one, well, there was one incident. I don't know if you guys seen this video. I forget where it is. Um, but you know, these people were on the, the, the outside of the street. I'm pretty sure they were white folks too. They were outside in their front porch, a uh, shit ton of cops were walking down and it's a residential area. This wasn't like the heart of downtown or probably where a protest actually was. There's a residential area, a bunch of, a bunch of cops were walking through and you can just hear like the, I didn't post this, but I wanted to. But you can just like when people yell and stuff, you can tell when they're just trying to do their job or whatever. And when they're trying to get, you know, like you to expect respect their authority or whatever, you know what I mean? But like just the way that they're coming off, it's like you can hear the evilness in their voice. You know, like these these aren't good people that are trying to like wrangle up all these folks. These aren't good people. They're not there. There's good cops. And there's bad cops. Everybody says, but these are the people that are trying to do this are not good cops. But best believe they're, they're going to do what they can to hurt you. They're out there talking about they said, get in your house, get in your house. You can just hear the, the, the just the oh, it was just so dark. I hate I hated hearing that. And then you just hear a guy line them up. And then they all started firing at them. Not real guns. Keep in mind, I, I believe it was like pepper, uh, pepper, uh, uh, paintball, paintball, uh, pepper spray, whatever the fuck rounds shits are. Um, and you know, like some of the people got hit and they ran inside, get inside, get inside, get inside. And they were like, stay in your house. And it's just like, bro, this is how you want to run like your streets or whatever at, at your protest. And a lot of places I'm hearing reports and this kind of goes back to, you don't know who you can trust, honestly, but I'm hearing a lot of reports that, a lot of these peaceful protests are getting instigated by the police, throwing out tear gas, yeah. starting to pepper spray people, and that people are just kind of reacting to it. And then you still, of course, got the people that are in there that you don't know what their motives are. Exactly. I said this during pre-pro. A lot of people are out there just hanging out with their friends. A lot of people are out there just to fucking, you know, be a part of get a cl a chase clout, be a part of history. A lot of people are out there. Some people are out there just on some straight fuck the police stuff. Some people are out legitimately out there for, for George Floyd and to say that Black Lives Matter for sure. Some people are just stuck. People, some of these people are just stuck in the house the last three months too. For for real, everybody does not have the same motive out there. Not every single person you see out there just because somebody's spraying something or messing something up doesn't mean that they're for that cause. Some of them are just young, dumped kids that are just like, oh, we can just fuck shit up now, and ain't nobody gonna do nothing about it. And the problem, but there's problems with that though, because as soon as it, all it takes is one. All it takes exactly. is one person who's not motivated and not dedicated for the right purpose for everybody else to justify that what you're doing is wrong. It only takes one person, but the problem is how many people does it take to get murdered at the hands of the police for it to feel wrong and exactly that's why, that's why the streets are like so the fuck what right or wrong so what whether we do this or not is black people going to keep getting killed by the police probably exactly and that's and that's why you can feel some kind of way but at the same time you have to understand because the other times this has happened it, it, it just it's continuing just like will smith quoted and i've been saying this for years racism ain't getting worse bro it's getting filmed yep
You know what I'm saying? And a lot of a lot of these a lot of these major corporations and businesses and business owners, they're okay with it too. Like, not I'm not talking about the small mom and pop shops. Obviously, I, nobody wants their business destroyed. First and foremost, a lot of them understand it though. They right. get it, and it's not they're not blaming the the protesters. They're blaming the the fucked up system that we're in. You know, Target put out a statement saying that you know we can we have more than enough money to pay our workers to repair and all this stuff. We can replace everything. That's okay. I know Burner went on Instagram saying his store out there in LA got messed up, and he was just like, I, I get it though. I'm with the people. It's all straight. Some people are going to be more angry, obviously, because you know they they're less off. They mm-hmm. came from the ghetto. They didn't have nothing. And now they're trying to. Mm-hmm. Now they're dealing with this. A lot of GoFundmes are out there, you know, to fix up the shops. But once again, it still comes back to we don't know specifically because everything is so generalized. Right? right everything is so generalized you don't know who's doing this you're you're seeing because they're part of the protest you're gonna be like oh fuck black lives matter now but you don't know who you don't know if it was some random little little kid that you know is just being a knucklehead you don't know if it was some white people you don't know if it was antifa you don't know if it was a, a fucking undercover cop trying to like fuck up the whole the whole uh movement or whatever you don't know what the fuck is going on because america has done some shady corrupt ass shit and gotten away with some shady corrupt ass shit for years so so for you to just to fucking just cancel a whole fucking movement because you saw one thing so today i seen a post from somebody we all know and it said it was it was a black lives matter was spray painted and it was just blm was spray painted on a mural i didn't get to read the the, the mural or whatever or the memorial i think it was for like fire department or something like that i'm not really sure i didn't see it but then they were like once you start vandalizing memorials i don't give a shit about your movement and it's like you realize you don't know at all who the fuck did that right you have no idea who did that. Exactly. You don't know if it was somebody who's really a part of the movement in the way they are. You don't know if it was somebody who's just using the name of the movement to do some fuck shit. You don't know who the fuck did that. And it's just like everybody, like people are just looking from the outside with this like little tiny lens, but they're not seeing the specifics. They're just, everybody looks, everybody looks like the same person right now. And it's all kinds of people out there for different various reasons. And that's what I'm, I'm it's making me so angry, bro. I have got, got to, get, I have had to get rid of so many people people bro so many people just because i was tired of seeing their nonsense somebody i went i served with he just kept talking about hitting people with his car if you get in front of me i'm gonna hit you blah blah making all kinds of jokes and all this shit fucking sharing videos of that shit i'm like bro a lot of these people aren't even doing that thing whatever if you want to fucking go by a pro if you want to go out of your way to go to a a protest about black lives matter talking about trump and talking about you know uh make america great again and all that stuff you already know what you're doing you know exactly what you're doing yep. don't go out there trying to be get a pity party now when somebody tries to fucking jump on your head because you want to do some ignorant shit you know what the fuck it is right here why the fuck are you gonna do some dumb shit like that if you want to be a part of this movement and you're not a, and, and you're for donald trump say that donald trump shit for, for when it's time to vote all right mm-hmm. go ahead and say it for then right now we're not on that right now bro this is this is black lives matter we're trying to fight for a certain cause right now and you're you're clashing with our cause right now that's what a majority of these people are gonna are gonna assume so it's just just like you, 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 you take the risk. Then all right, cool. Play super games, win super prizes. That's what they say for the other side, and right? You know what? You said it. You said if you take that risk. The crazy part is, a lot of these people saying ignorant, stupid shit. They only take a risk when they run into a riot. Some of the people we arguing about take a risk walking outside their front door every day. Every That's day. The difference. That's the difference. We not worried about how much risk you're putting yourself at by trying to calm down these riots. Fuck that. All these people are at risk. A lot of these people are at risk just being who they are. Just being who they are. And that's wow. why, and I know we got into some heated stuff and a lot of emotions coming out, but I just want to say like if I said anything a little ignorant or harmful toward uh the white folks i'm it's not like that you know what i'm saying like obviously i've been blessed to have had plenty of white friends who understand progression who are with the swirl so to say white I, allies and white accomplices i, I just want to appreciate everybody who's staying in their lane being supportive the way they can not saying stupid shit because they know better because they know better. So I just want to give a shout out and appreciate everybody who's staying in their lane and, and not disrupt, uh, destructing anything and um, not showing, uh, you know, spots of weakness. Because people could be very strong minded and very um, great people and have one moment of weakness and get pegged as an ignorant person for the rest of their life. So just uh, everybody out there being very careful about their words. Uh, you know, we appreciate you. And I hope it's no, it's no hate. I still, I still love everybody who's with community, and community extends to the country. Everybody who's with 
people being people and we can all work together, I'm with you. Anybody who thinks that they're superior uh, superior because of a pigmentation, suck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what else to say. And there's and there's two there's two words I think everybody needs to remember in this time, especially with, with the post that you saw, Brandon. It's two words are called false flag. So if yep. so, if people disguise as other people doing certain things. That that's a real thing. It's it's definitely out there. You definitely do your research. Um, if if you see somebody doing something, yeah, I, I, that'd be a totally different thing. But don't just jump to these conclusions out here. False flagging is real. Mm-hmm. You know what? I, and just I just kind of urge my friends and people around me. Um, take moments like this and, and don't just shrug them off. You know what I'm saying? It, it's a re- it's a constant reminder to just be a better person every day because you never know what kind of mood you're going to change somebody. Like you never know how you're going to affect somebody's day and how their day is going to butterfly off of that butterfly effect. You know what I'm saying? So open the doors for folks. Hello. Thank you. How you doing? Just be a good person because you never know. You never know if that guy, and and I hate to say it because a lot of bad people will let a lot of good things come out of them because of how they're feeling. So I'm not saying racist people ain't going to exist, but you never know if if that officer was having a better day, he might not have done that stupid shit. So, and I'm not trying to give any kind of, uh, um, I'm just saying, just don't forget to just be a nice person because a lot of evil goes on. And if you do your part to shed good into the world, um, God's going to take care of you. You got to believe that you, you get out of what you put in, get out, what you put in period. This man killed a man in cuffs on his neck. His wife set out for divorce the next day. What? Hey, his wife is uh, his wife. I heard a story and I'm not trying to spread rumors, but I read something. I don't know if it's true, but the officer Chauvin, is that how his last name is? The officer who, who, um, murdered George Floyd, his wife is of Asian descent. She looks Asian and she is trying to pretty much leave him now. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, pretty yeah. So who knows? And and not to mention, we didn't even bring this up. In the George Floyd incident, that officer has had multiple, multiple um issues and, and reports as to how he's gone about his job. So they're trying to charge him with uh with third degree murder, if I'm not mistaken. Third degree? Yeah. It's something about like not having the intent or something like that. Like, like basically not. Ha- it, if it's not premeditated, then that's where you get hit with okay. third degree. Okay, well, br- check this out. You know how you know how a lot of people are in prison for their life because they did something stupid, but they are not stupid. Yeah. How come it's different for him? It, it, you're right, absolutely right. His negligence, whole- the fact that he ignored what he was doing is. I don't care if you have intent. You ignored the fact that what you were doing is wrong. Some that, some would say that that created the intent to kill is that you did that. You exactly. people okay. were multiple people were telling exactly. you not to do this and you proceeded to do it. What about parents? If you ignore what your child is doing, what do they call that? Negligence. Right. Mm-hmm. Period. You ignored it. They call it's child it's child endangerment when you ignore what they're doing because they're not under control. In this circumstance, George Floyd was not under control because he was already detained and on the ground in cuffs, bro. It's that simple. It's that easy. It's like if you pin down a kid and put your knee on his neck for 10 minutes. What's the difference? He's not going. It's just, man, I'm getting hype, bro. I can't do this. Yes, it's 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 crazy out there, man. Um, real quick, I just want to kind of give like a little last two last two little closing statements really fast before we get out of here, because you know we we already pretty much hit our time. But I want to say that first and foremost, I'm pretty sure I speak for everybody here. Dun dun dun! It's an old joke, you know, inside joke. But I'm pretty sure I speak for everybody here when I say that none of us, absolutely none of us, condone the looting and and the and the pillaging of any of the stores or whatever. We don't want that to happen, but. At the end of the day, if that's what gets something changed, if that get if that gets us changed, hurting their pockets gets us changed, whatever, and gets people in the voting booths to be like, man, we need to fix this. It's you know this is because of a messed up system. Then all right, fine. You know, it, it, it at least it got us somewhere. You know, um, only time will tell. Obviously, if we'll see that change or not. But 
I, none of us are, you know, saying to go out there and loot or, you know, pillage any of these stores, especially right. not mom and pop shops, you know, by any means. And then lastly, please do not generalize every protest and just say, you know, like write it off because of a couple bad seeds or anything like that. You know, the cops aren't all out here just, you know, a holier than thou in every in every city either. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say it's probably it's always the cops that are doing this, but, you know, you got good and bad on both sides. It's always the truth. Um, but you just have to keep your eyes open and kind of watch out for what's really going on out there. And just, you know, you know, bob and weave, basically, you know, so because there's going to they're going to hit you with some misinformation. They're going to hit you with some real information. And, you know, depending on who you are, might depend on what you're actually going to take in or not, you know, or allow yourself to take in. And sometimes you got to look at yourself and and really think about, you know, the type of person you are and the things that you're into to determine if, you know, basically what you what you allow yourself to take in. You know, it's 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 a confusing and dark time, but we kind of got to stick together. We got to you got to unify. We got to unite. We got to come up with plans. We got to fucking talk to people. We got to, I'm a, this ain't going to go away overnight for sure. I definitely plan on, you know, maybe having some more talks. Maybe, I don't know what I'm going to do, but uh, I, I definitely want to get out there for sure. And you know what? Um, I, America is lucky that all we're, that all these people want to do is burn down shit and steal. They're lucky that's all because in other, in other places, they do a lot worse for a lot less. So mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned, these people have put up with that shit for, for, way long way past due and yeah. i'm and i know it's i know it's ignorant to go loot i know it's not thought out to set buildings on fire in your own community but if i'm keeping it real in comparison to what could be happening they real lucky all they doing is setting shit on fire and stealing they real lucky because in other places when people in, in positions of power is doing what the people don't agree with they literally drag them through the streets they tie them up to cars and drag them through their streets naked so like they that's honestly what we need to do here for a handful of people but it's not gonna happen you know so i just america real lucky right now for sure and i guess that pretty much wraps it up unless you guys have anything else to say anybody else got any last closing statements man if you just close it because we don't we can go for another hour just go ahead and close. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right Piglets, this has been another installment of culture by the uncultured don't forget to follow us on instagram facebook and twitter at culture by the uncultured remember piglets culture by the uncultured is available on apple podcast spotify soundcloud and youtube we hope everyone out there is staying safe and if you can't be safe be deadly catch you guys next time later piglets this is america Don't get you slipping.